It is estimated that up to 10% of adults in the developed world suffer from hypothyroidism, so an underfunctioning thyroid. Other thyroid related illnesses, such as Hashimoto's or hyperthyroidism, are also on the rise. So, in this video, I want to talk about the most important natural nutrients that your thyroid needs to stay healthy, why so many common symptoms, such as fatigue or cold hands and feet, are caused by a problematic thyroid, and diet changes and supplements that can help support your thyroid recovery. Let's start by discussing what the thyroid actually is and why we need it. The thyroid is a small butterfly-shaped gland located at the front of your neck under your skin. It is part of your endocrine system and controls many of your body's important functions by producing and releasing certain hormones. Your thyroid's main job is to control the speed of your metabolism, so your metabolic rate. This is the process of how your body transforms the food that you consume into energy. So even though the thyroid gland itself is fairly small, when it isn't working properly, you will feel the impact throughout your whole body. You can think of it as the accelerator of your body's energy system. The pituitary gland, which is located at the base of your brain, sends a signal to the thyroid to pump out more thyroid hormones and accelerate your metabolism. These hormones are then carried to different organs to allow them to function correctly, because there is a thyroid receptor on every cell in your body. The most important hormones secreted by the thyroid gland include thyroxine, so T4. This is the primary hormone your thyroid produces and releases. Even though your thyroid makes most of this hormone, it doesn't have that much of an effect on your metabolism when it isn't converted into T3. T3 is the active thyroid hormone. Your thyroid produces a small amount of T3 directly, and certain organs in your body can also transform T4 into T3. Since T3 is more metabolically active than T4, its impact on your metabolism is also more noticeable. Besides T4 and T3, you also have RT3, which your thyroid makes very small amounts of to reverse the effects of T3. Let's now talk about symptoms related to thyroid issues. While there are many possible symptoms because your thyroid function affects your whole body, common symptoms of an underperforming thyroid include fatigue, cold hands and feet, low body temperature, dry skin, and low overall energy. On the other hand, hyperthyroidism, so an overactive thyroid, can lead to weight loss, nervousness, hand tremors, rapid or irregular heartbeat, and feeling on edge all the time. Now, the diagnosis of clinical hyper or hypothyroidism can only be done by a doctor, and they will usually use the following blood tests as indicators. TSH, which stands for Thyroid Stimulating Hormone, Free T4, Free T3, Reverse T3, as well as other markers such as TPO. If you suspect a thyroid dysfunction, definitely get it checked out with the help of a medical professional. Unfortunately, a lot of people's results come back normal, even though they have signs of a thyroid dysfunction, and usually it's of subclinical hypothyroidism, so signs of an underperforming thyroid that aren't severe enough to show up on a blood test. This is where nutrients and your diet come into play. By optimizing your nutrient intake and giving your thyroid what it needs, we can improve its function and often completely get rid of symptoms associated with thyroid problems. Now in this video I will only talk about the key players here, because as always most if not all nutrients are involved. But because of time reasons I can't go over all of them, which is why we will focus on the most important ones. Number one is iodine. This is the thyroid nutrient most people are familiar with. That's because iodine is needed for the production of thyroid hormones. T4 has four iodine molecules and T3 has three iodine molecules. So it's safe to say that the thyroid can function without iodine. The body does not make iodine, so it needs to be an essential part of your diet or supplement regimen. Next is selenium. Selenium is a necessary cofactor for the production of T4 and it also converts T4 into T3. If you supplement iodine, especially in high doses, without selenium, you can cause a selenium deficiency, and if you take selenium without iodine, you can cause an iodine deficiency. This usually only happens at high doses that you reach from supplementation, but what I wanted to highlight is that they are cofactors that work together. Many people know about iodine, but forget about selenium. And third, we have zinc. 
Zinc is also needed for the production of T4, T3, and thyroid-stimulating hormone TSH. A deficiency in zinc, which is fairly common, can lead to hypothyroidism. Besides these, there are also other important nutrients such as copper, molybdenum, and manganese that play some role in thyroid hormones and thyroid regulation. But please don't go out and buy all of them as supplements and start taking them in high doses. As I explain in most of my videos, the ratio between nutrients is often more important than the actual level of a single nutrient. Because nutrient ratios are so critical, there are two more nutrients that we need to talk about here. They don't directly affect the release of thyroid hormones like the ones we already talked about, but they still influence how your body reacts to thyroid activity. They are calcium and potassium. Calcium has an antagonistic relationship with thyroid activity because it combines to iodine receptors and negatively impacts thyroid hormone use. Normally, this isn't a problem because most of our calcium should be in the bones and teeth. However, many people nowadays suffer from tissue calcification where calcium starts to move out of the bones and deposits in the soft tissue. When this happens, calcium is no longer where it should be and instead interferes with tissue, slows down thyroid function and makes other tissue less receptive of thyroid hormones. That's why it's so important to test for a tissue calcification and if you have signs of it, to work on reversing it. And the last important nutrient is potassium. In terms of thyroid health, it is the counterpart to calcium. It sensitizes your cells to thyroid hormone and dissolves calcium. Unfortunately, people who have too much calcium in the tissue usually also have low potassium, so they suffer from a calcium excess paired with a potassium deficiency. On the other end, people who have symptoms of a higher than optimal thyroid function often have too much potassium in the tissue relative to calcium, which would slow down their thyroid function. These are generalizations, of course, but they do fairly well in practice. As always, please make sure to not guess your own nutrient levels and instead get them properly checked with the right test. Otherwise, you will be supplementing blindly and cannot track progress.